Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So here, let's let a sub n be 5n squared over e to the n. Intuitively, we know that e to the n is going to grow faster than n squared, and consequently faster than 5 times n squared. But we want to make this explicit. And to do so, we're going to define a very similar function, sort of like what we were talking about before. So let's let f of x be 5x squared over e to the x. So f of n is a sub n. All right, so we're defining a function. Here, this sequence is defining a bunch of, uh, a bunch of values at integers. f of x, think of it as filling in the gap. So we get a nice continuous curve. So if we can show that f of x converges as x goes to infinity, uh, excuse me, if the limit of f of x exists as x goes to infinity, then we can show that the sequence a sub n converges to that same value. So imagine that you have some curve like this, this is, say f of x, and along f of x we have a bunch of points like this. Well, if f of x converges to some value, then so do these points in the sequence. So we now want to figure out the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x. And to do that, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So we get the limit as x approaches infinity. We can apply L'Hopital's rule because both the top and the bottom are going to infinity. So we take the derivative, we get 10x over e to the x. Once again, we have a situation where the top and bottom are both going to infinity. So this is the limit as x approaches infinity of 10 over e to the x. And that limit is 0. So since the limit of this thing exists and is 0, we can conclude that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n also equals 0. Now, we have to be careful. So in this situation, the function we associated with a sub n is this function f of x equals 5x squared over e to the x. And that limit does indeed exist as x goes to infinity. If an associated function like that that you define has a limit that doesn't exist. I shouldn't even say it has a limit if it doesn't exist. The limit doesn't exist, then you can't say anything about the associated sequence. So if you can't find a good function, then you're not going to be able to use this technique to, to determine whether a, uh, a sequence converges. So let's look at two examples of that. So let's suppose that a sub n is sine of pi times n, and f of x is sine of pi times x. Well, then f of n is indeed a sub n, but the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is the limit as n goes to infinity of 0, because every one of these terms is 0. On the other hand, the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x does not exist. So in this case, we have this limit that doesn't exist, but the limit of the sequence does exist, and it's 0. And so to see y, think of a graph of sine, something like this. Well, the graph of the function does not approach a single value because it keeps oscillating back and forth. But if you pick the sequence correctly, as we do here, we always hit 0. So in this case, we have a sequence whose, uh, that converges as n goes to infinity and an associated function that 
doesn't. On the other hand, if we define a sub n not as sine of pi n, but simply as sine of n, and then f of x as sine of x, then the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n does not exist, and the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x does not exist. Now, we didn't prove this. This isn't a trivial thing to prove, that this sequence here, a sub n equals sine of n, doesn't converge. But it's true that it doesn't converge. And the problem with this example and the previous one is that the function we have here doesn't have a limit as x goes to infinity. So in those cases, you can't conclude anything.